Welcome everyone, my name is Zach and winter is almost here. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my top tips for cold weather driving for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y owners. Now some of these tips are likely applicable to other EVs as well, but this video is gonna be really focused on the Model 3 and Model Y. I own a Model 3 and have driven in some very cold weather, so these tips really come from my own personal experience and I can verify that they've worked. I live in Colorado and I like to get up into the mountains to go skiing in winter, so I'm very aware of the stigma that electric vehicles have terrible range in cold weather. It was one of the reasons that I was hesitant to buy an EV originally, since it didn't really seem practical if I couldn't take a day trip to go skiing without having to stop and charge. Well, I'm happy to report that I overestimated the impact that cold weather would have on the range of my Tesla Model 3. Don't get me wrong, there is definitely a reduction in efficiency of the car in cold weather, but there are a number of tricks that you can use in order to reduce the overall impact. Okay, so the key to cold weather driving with an EV is really just having a warm battery. When a car sits outside in winter, the battery gets cold, and they don't like being cold. Cold batteries have increased internal resistance, which limits their capacity, as well as limits the rate at which they can charge and discharge. Basically, this limits the amount of power that the battery can supply to the motors, as well as how much power the battery can take in from high-speed charging and regenerative braking. And driving with limited regenerative braking because your battery's cold is no fun if you're used to one pedal driving. You'll have to use your brakes a lot more to slow down, and if you're not used to that, it can catch you off guard. And I think this is especially dangerous on snowy or icy roads. You want to feel comfortable behind the wheel in these conditions, and know exactly how the car is going to respond to your inputs. It's also considerably less efficient to drive with limited regenerative braking, since when you use your mechanical brakes, all of that energy is just going to heat. And unfortunately, because electric vehicles are so efficient, they don't really give off a lot of waste heat like gas and diesel vehicles do. So it can actually take a long time for the battery to warm up while driving. It could be upwards of 30 minutes depending on what kind of driving you're doing and how cold it is. Highway driving uses more power and will warm up the battery faster, but with city driving, it's going to take a while for things to warm up. And if it's super cold, like below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, it may never warm up fully. So the biggest thing to remember when driving an electric vehicle in cold weather is to warm up the battery as much as possible before driving. And luckily Tesla gives us a few tools in order to do this, they just don't really explain how to use them. First up, if it's below 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside, preheat your cabin whenever possible. You can do this right from the app and don't even have to go out to the car at all. Personally, I aim for about 30 minutes before I plan to depart. I find that this gets the juices flowing and warms up the battery a decent amount. If it's extremely cold outside, say less than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, then you might want to go even longer. And this may seem a bit wasteful, but I think there are two big benefits here. First, you should have most of your regen available once you start driving, and this will make the driving experience feel more normal and therefore safer. And second, because you'll still have most of your regen, your efficiency is going to be pretty good. There will still be some form of impact from the cold weather, but not nearly as drastic. Another cold weather trick related to the climate control is to not rely on setting a super high air temperature. Especially if it's just you in the car, it's a lot more efficient to use your seat heater. I'll typically set the cabin air temperature to about 72 degrees Fahrenheit and turn on the heated seat while preheating. And then when I get in the car and start driving, I'll drop the temperature down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the second way to heat up your car's battery before departing is through charging, and Tesla gives us a pretty convenient tool in order to do this but it may not be very clear on how or why to use it. Most people plug in their cars every night when they get home, and the car charges up to its set level of say 80% and then stops. But if it's cold out, that means that your battery warmed up from charging, and then after charging completed in the middle of the night, your battery had time to cool off before you were ready to depart in the morning. So it would be much better if your car didn't start to charge immediately when you plugged it in, but rather waited until the middle of the night to start so that it reaches its max state of charge right when you're ready to leave in the morning. Luckily, Tesla has given us a feature to do this and it's called scheduled departure. And it's perfect if you leave your home at the same time every day. So in order to schedule departure, all you have to do is go to your charging screen and then go down here to schedule and depart at. And here you can set whatever time you would typically leave in the morning. So say you leave at 7 a.m. every morning and then you can set it to either just weekdays or all week. Now I would love if Tesla implemented this feature in the app so that you didn't have to be in the car to do it. I think it would make the feature way more useful to be able to say, hey, I'm going skiing at 7 a.m. tomorrow, so let me set that in my phone so my car will be preheated and charged up right at seven, ready to go. 
Regardless, this feature is great because it allows you to warm up the cabin and end charging right before you're about to leave, maximizing the heat put into the battery. Now you may be wondering how different levels of chargers are going to impact your results with this. And yes, there is going to be a difference between using a standard 120 volt outlet versus a 240 volt level two charger. I currently just use a 120 volt outlet to charge my car and it does warm up the battery a bit, but not nearly as much as a level two charger would. However, combined with preheating the cabin, you can still get most of your regen using these tips. The one downside is that preheating the cabin while using a 120 volt outlet for charging is going to eat up two to 3% of your battery while preheating. The heaters in the car just require more power than the 120 volt outlet can deliver. But I think this is worth it to have the warmer battery when you're leaving. Now, if you get in your car ready to go, and let's say you didn't have time to preheat it or it was super cold out and your battery is still a bit cold, there's one thing you can do to warm it up pretty quickly upon departing. This is actually a great excuse to utilize a lead foot to generate some excess heat and warm up the battery a bit faster. But that's just what I hear. I wouldn't really know anything about that because I, I, you know, I drive around in chill mode all the time. So yeah, definitely, definitely not something I would know about. Nope. Anyway, another factor to consider when driving in cold weather is that your charging speed may be limited. Now this is never going to affect level two charging or anything like that, but it will impact high speed charging at superchargers. So the important thing to remember here is that if you want to maximize charging speed on a road trip or something like that, use the car's navigation system and set the supercharger as the destination. The car will actually preheat the battery to get it into its happy zone once you're getting close to the charger and this will allow for faster charge rates. To my knowledge, this is actually done by using the motors inefficiently in order to generate excess heat, which is then flowed through the battery. If anyone knows the details on that, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, now let me summarize the key takeaways from this video. If it's cold out, try to utilize the scheduled departure feature as much as possible. This will automatically warm up your battery before you depart by using both the climate control and charging. But if you don't depart at the same time every day or you're not at home, the best thing you can do is just turn on the climate control from your phone at least 30 minutes before you plan to leave. These two things alone will make a huge difference in your winter driving experience. And stay tuned because I plan to do some efficiency testing here in Colorado this winter in order to see what kind of impact cold weather really has on range. Last summer, I performed an efficiency test where I drove from the Denver area all the way up to Loveland Pass at about 12,000 feet to see what kind of an impact high altitude driving has on efficiency. And I plan to run an identical test in cold weather to see what kind of an impact that has. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this going forward. And if you're planning to buy a Tesla and this video helped you out, feel free to use my referral link in the description below and we'll both get a thousand free supercharging miles. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.